So drawing for a child character is very different than drawing for an adult because with adults, you start by drawing for their profession, what it is that they do, and then you identify two relationships in their life, one that's awesome and has been the pinnacle of their experiences so far, and the other that is just terrible and has um, and you find out how both of those have impacted them in some way. Children don't work with that drawing, first of all, because they don't have a profession. They're not anywhere close to having a profession. And second of all, because the relationships that children tend to have are all or nothing. Um, and their uh, children don't tend to see what's wrong in relationships anyway. They tend to um, fixate on the things that they love and they're pretty blind to everything else. So when you're drawing for a child, you need a completely different paradigm. So when I start to put together a child character, I typically start with a habitat because children are heavily influenced by the habitat they're in. And then I will draw one relationship card. Ooh, that could be fun. I draw one relationship card um, and uh, to determine like the primary, masterful, most important relationship in their life. Um, and then from there... I do three random draws for for pivotal memories. So we're gonna start. Oops, we're gonna start um, with the habitat and see where we are. By the way, um, this is for a sci-fi space opera. That's what we're randomizing this time. So child character for a grade school sci-fi space opera is the goal. So the the um, the location that they're in is volcano. The planet's womb, unstoppable, poisonous vapors, nutrient-rich magma. It's the epitome of starting over. Okay, so my very first thought here with this um, isn't to have a volcano literally, but I really like the idea. I was talking about the planet's womb. So this is the place where new life is formed um, and a new planet is in the process of being created. So for a sci-fi grade school um, space opera, what we are, what this reminds me of is a, par a planet that's in the process of being terraformed. It's just barely habitable and the terraforming process is still ongoing. Um, so I, I really like the idea of having, um, a group of people who are desperate enough to live on a new place, or at least impatient enough to live on a new place, um, that they will settle down as soon as they possibly can, um, without necessarily waiting for the planet to be fancy. So I love that as a, uh, initial location, both for this story and for the childhood of this character. I think this would be great. Um, ne next we want to know what the primary relationship in this character's life is. Um, and yeah, you know, we saw this flipped over accidentally earlier, but this is a puppet. Um, agency is being violated or aggressively manipulated that causes severe cognitive dissonance until strings are cut. Um, and for a grade school space opera, um, we're looking for something lighthearted, something, something familiar, I think is what I want to shoot for. <laughs> so my very first thought is literally a sock puppet, but I haven't really seen children carry those around before. Um, my second thought is a stuffed animal because I do see children carrying those around all the time. So I like the idea of having maybe a stuffed animal. Um, just this, this is a, a kid who has not outgrown their stuffed animal. They're kind of getting too old for it. Um, and I imagine the other kids would make fun of them a lot. Um, but for a space opera, the other thing that might be really fun to do, my second thought was, well, what if we have a robot? And I didn't want to run with that right away just because robots are always a sidekick in a sci-fi story. But what if we have a combination of the two? What if this character has... Um, in their world, they have robots that are kind of like nursery robots, and they're fuzzy and cute and colorful, and they're intended to be, um, you know, just a, this is the the little robot nanny that kind of keeps a basic watch out for a kid. Um, but I could see a young child bonding deeply <laughs> with their nursery robot, um, and uh, not 
having difficulty letting it go, especially if it's still in good condition and it still serves them and watches out for them in their life. Like that's almost like having a pet, but it's a pet who understands you, who knows your routines, who talks to you. Um, and I, I could see that being a very significant relationship in their life. Um, so I think I'm going to run with that. So we have a planet who's, uh, just barely begun the process of being terraformed. That's ongoing. Um, this is a kid who has a nursery type robot that they're still super in love with and follows them around everywhere. I could see them, this might even actually make a great opening scene, is they're trying to modify the exterior of this robot so that people will stop making fun of them. Um, you know, so maybe they take off the colorful fur layers, but they try to put something else on top that... Um, uh, because you wouldn't just want to strip it bare if you're used to being, if you're used to it being fuzzy. Oh, you know what I'm going to do there? Actually, I'm going to draw a texture, and we'll see if we can find a positive angle on this texture for like how they might. Oh, there you go, perfect. So furry, it's a soft, comforting layer associated with living things. Okay, I'm just going to take that as confirmation then that this character still desperately wants this robot to be fuzzy in some way. That that's a really big component. Um, of how they want to modify it. They just want to modify it in a way that it doesn't quite look like a nursery robot anymore. So I think that would make a great opening scene for a grade school space opera. Um, let's see what else. Okay, so we have Habitat. We have primary relationship in their life. We now want three pivotal memories. Um, so I tend to draw... Um, I want an object. Give me... Give me a die. Plastic dice. Um, I just want d6. Okay, cool. All right. So I got a d6. Eh, it fell down. Okay, we got a three. So I'm just trying to randomize um, for uh, three cards. So we got a three. Well, uh, three again. Okay. Um, and a one. So we have these three cards. These are going to be three pivotal memories, and we already drew this one. Um, and then we want to know how these memories have changed this character in some way. So you saw what I did there. I just had a random draw, um, of any three cards. You can grab just whatever feels good to you. Um, and I think I actually want to have, maybe, I want to add a texture somewhere to one of these memories. So I'm going to start by putting that here because this, uh, this flipped before I could ask my question. Um, so the first, the first question that comes up, uh, pivotal memory over here is going to be set in a cave. Interesting. So it's an isolated biome that would survive even if the sun died. It represents impressive adaptability and unnecessary paranoia. Um, interesting. So my initial thought was I wanted to know where this child was before they came here. Um, and I think it's really interesting that maybe there is a stable biome. That would be kind of a cool story. Let's say the sun has died. Um, but we've found a way to stabilize Earth so that we can survive even when out, without the sun. Um, I don't even know what that would take, but it would be uh, just a really interesting starting point to say, okay, well, we are surviving. We're doing okay. Um, and we've adapted, and it's stable here. Um, but some people are like, you know what? We're living, but we're not thriving the way that we used to. Um, so I could see them reaching a point of like giving up on earth because the sun is gone um, and wanting to venture out and start over. Um, I think that would be a really interesting, really interesting beginning to a story. So one of the things that would be very evocative about this world for this child character is the sun. Um, and that, I think that is going to be the pivotal memory that I'm going to connect here. Pivotal memory is the very first time that they saw the sun. They saw a rising sun. Um, so sunrises would be just incredibly valuable and um, meaningful to this character. Um, I also want to know, though, what it was like, where they were living before, and how... Um, I'm not quite sure what to make of this one. 
assassin kills artfully, not necessarily causing physical death. So maybe they associate where they lived before with death. Um, it was a place where life and death was very mechanical. I think that would work with kills artfully. Um, I'm going to interpret that as efficiently. Um, this is a place of mechanical life and death. If you have a biome where it doesn't have a sun, you're going to need to farm all of your wildlife that's eaten for food. Um, so, you know, you can't have cage-free animals if there's no sun and no grass for them to eat. So that is maybe how I'm going to start interpreting that. So I want to know how this, this original memory affects them. Um, okay, unstable. On the edge of collapse, explosion or change implies two unequal opposing forces useful enough to justify reliance despite unpredictability. Um... So I thought about this for a minute. I was I was kind of going back through my memories. I grew up on a farm. Um, so I was kind of going back through my farm memories and trying to remember um, what the pivotal memories were for us. Um, and one of the things that was uh, quite memorable for my family was that we had terrible luck with dogs. Um, we, I think we went through 13 dogs in seven years. Um, we just, and, and bizarre stuff would happen. Everything, you know, we lost some to cars, but we had a dog get struck by lightning twice. Our luck with dogs was just outrageously bad. Um, to, to the point of, of being almost laughable. Um, and we loved our dogs and we were always really sad when we lost them, but it just kind of reached a point where we were, where it felt ridiculous because we were trying to live on a farm. We were trying to keep these animals alive and we just sucked at it. Um, so I think that's actually how I want to interpret the assassin here is that um, I'm going to have his family have terrible luck with living things. That He has a black thumb um, and has a sense that if life is under his care, uh, he doesn't trust that it will keep living because he's seen a lot of things die and he knows that responsibility is a very important part of keeping things alive, but he doesn't necessarily understand how to do that on his own. So that's me inter um, inserting my personal experience here and that's where this is beginning to come to life for me for this character. Cool, so that's our first pivotal memory. Um, I want to see... I'm going to turn this one over. Okay, so next memory. Uh, fool, first thought that comes to mind is a clown. Um, brings up forbidden topics, urges all to save our life, and postpone battle as long as possible. Two variations, wise and lazy. Um, <laughs> so first thoughts, clown, cyborg, cyborg clown. That could be fun. I'm looking for lighthearted interpretations here. I want to know how this memory has affected the kid. Um, Locked, rigid or immovable, unyielding to force, opens to a key. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So. Locked. Locked, locked, locked. Okay, so this might be something really simple. I want to find ways to, like... I want to find ways, um, whenever I'm putting together a story in a new habitat, I'm always looking for the details that are familiar among the things that are very different. Um, that was a storytelling principle I learned from Stant Latore, um, is when you're, when you're creating these worlds, you want to create, um, you're looking for the things that resonate with people and are, are familiar despite great difference, um, because that's what helps stories to really resonate. So. I'm personally not afraid of clowns, and I know it's a it's something that people laugh about a lot. Um, but I don't actually know very many people who are. Um, so I'm trying to find a more human angle on this. It brings up forbidden topics. Forbidden topics. Save real life. Postponed battle. Two variations: wise and lazy. Um, so what would yield locked? Okay, so maybe he had some adult in his life who was just really silly. 
constantly trying to make the kids laugh, you know, and it might even be like on the spaceship on the way over. Um, so, um, my, and my thought with, with locked in combination with fool is that maybe this kid has a hard time laughing. Um, he takes everything a little bit too seriously, even when hilarious things are going on around him. He doesn't necessarily see the joke. Um, that's kind of a little bit sad, though. I want something a little more, like, dynamic for this character. Um, I feel like I need another clue. Um, I'm gonna come back to this, because I'm not quite sure yet how, in how to interpret this, but I want to see what this prompt is, and then see if we can fill in this hole. Um, so third major memory. Ice. Oh, interesting. A vital element in a state of life-threatening extreme, symbol of imbalance. Unsustainable, but in the short term can provide rest. Um, cool. So I like this. Um, what this does for me is if you have a planet that's in the process of being terraformed, weather is going to be wildly unpredictable. You're not going to have regular seasons. Um, and uh, if it's extremely warm, which it probably is, because terraforming, you have lots of energy that's moving around and it's probably heating up the atmosphere a lot, um, ice might be hard to come by in the new world. And you could exacerbate that by having the ice maker on the spaceship they came from break. Um, so they can't even figure out how to fix it. And maybe that's an ongoing joke in the story. Um, so I want to know how this has affected the kid. Um, adorable. <laughs> oh, interesting. Too cute to be taken seriously. Cannot intimidate others no matter how hard they try. Their boundaries are frequently ignored. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what this means to me, they, this is, this is something that they're passionate about. This is where their passion really starts to come out and where, um, where they feel alive for people around them. They get so excited about something. There's something they love so much. Um, that it triggers this, like, adorable reaction, um, that, <laughs> that, that causes other people around them to, to take them less seriously. They know that this is a button that can be pushed. Um, so ice, um, ice, vital element in a state of life-threatening extreme. So what I want to do here with this prompt, I don't want this to just be like a quirk of the character. I actually want to deepen it. Um, I want to know where in their life, where in their life this comes up and like how it changes how they interact with other people. Um... This is a trait. It is a trait. Okay, so traits are interesting because traits traits um, are designed typically to change how the character interacts with the world. It's outward energy. Um, outward energy. So, and I, I tend to take these drawings very slowly when I'm when I'm just doing them for myself. So this is kind of a slower drawing. You're going to get to see. Um, how it all plays out a little bit at a time. Um, and it, it goes slower when I'm all by myself. When you're with a friend, uh, you'll break through these much, much faster. Um, locked. Locked. Goofy. Um, adorable. Okay, so I want a character that's more lighthearted. Um... And I actually want a character that's pretty open. Because you have to be pretty open to, to let a fuzzy robot follow you around. I think that's I think it's important that the character is pretty open, but there's there's something that they keep locked up. Um because and, and for that reason I'm gonna go with the wise fool. Um Oh, here we go. Okay. Wise fool, kid's last birthday party on the old planet. Um, but he probably knew he was about to move. Uh, his parents probably wanted to have a really great birthday party so he could say goodbye to all of his friends. 
Um, and I, I could see him just having a really hard time at that birthday party. Um, and you know, so, so the memory that comes to mind here is there's a great birthday party. His parents hire a clown, invite all his friends. And the kid is so upset that he can't bring himself to participate in the festivities, um, because he's moving. And the clown who's been hired to put on a good show for the kids, um, ends up setting aside the act when the birthday boy runs away. Um, and, uh, I think, I think parents would probably be like, Hey, give him some space, you know, just let him do whatever. But the clown actually goes and, and finds the kid and sits down with him in a corner. Um, and has a, a, a like a good solid heart to heart with the kid um and so so it's a wise clown um and i'm kind of enjoying like the femininity of this card too so i, I think i'm going to have it be a female clown um goes sits down with this boy um and just talks with him about how hard it is to move to a new place and leave everyone you love behind knowing you you're never going to come back um and as a result, um, as a result of that conversation, I think this kid is going to be looking for true friends. Um, I, I suspect that the clown would have given him advice on how to make new friends in the new place, how to tell the difference between friends you can trust and friends you can't, and that that's where the key comes in. So this kid is closed off. He's not vulnerable. Um, he won't let you in until and unless you demonstrate whatever the the wise thing was that the clown, the birthday clown, recommended he look for in true friends. Um, so I, I like that. I think that's a really good pivotal memory. Um, and that begins to be memorable for me. Um, so, okay. So this is a kid who looks for true friendship. This is a kid who has a black thumb. He has a fuzzy robot who follows him around. They're living on a terraformed planet. Um, this is quite the childhood character so far. And the last prompt that we're trying to figure out here is this third pivotal memory. Um, and sometimes uh, taking a note, of extremes can be very helpful. So I need something to constrain this a little bit more. I want to know something that, so if this memory has done something positive for him, I also want to know what he has cut himself off from in life. Like what is he not? What is he absolutely not because of an experience like this? Um, and for that, I'm going to draw actually a character card and apply it to him. So maybe this is a profession. Maybe this is just something he has no interest in. <laughs> Interesting. So this is a kid who doesn't. Hmm. Healer. Something is absolutely not. Nice. Vital element in a state of life threatening extreme fixes broken things. Hmm. Okay, so we have we have a weakness for the character. We have a friend. We have criteria that they're using to judge life. Um And I would say, so I'm looking for opposites. I'm looking for opposites here. Um, what ice-oriented memory would make somebody, like, not want to be? Okay, here we go. Here's our light, light-hearted angle. Um, cause we're looking for a memory. Um, we're looking for a memory. I'm going to say this is a memory of going ice skating. Um, and, uh, maybe this kid was involved in ice skating before they moved to a new planet. Um, which would be interesting, uh, as a boy, um, it, it has more of like, a um, you know, cause ice skating is frequently... Uh, considered to be a girl sport, sport, but boys are quite good at it. Um, 
And that would add some beautiful, like, flair, I think, to how this character moves. Um, and I can see how, if he was particularly good at ice skating, um, if he lived, if he lived outdoors, um, in a colder region and was particularly good at this sport, oh, which actually makes a lot of sense, if they're on a planet that has no sun anymore, um, winter sports would probably become more common, um, and more highly appreciated, and it would be especially weird to be in a place that's hot all the time. Um, so I'm gonna say he was, he really enjoyed ice skating. He loves the fun that was associated with that, the fun and the beauty and the artistry of it. Um, and what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to say as a result of this just core memory um, where he feels whole and complete and impassioned when he's playing, um, which matches the adorable angle, he has no interest in the sciences. He doesn't want to be a doctor, an engineer, um, a mathematician, none of those. He wants to be the sort of person in this new world um, that helps other people remember how to play. And I think that rounds this character out. Um, it gives him some really good openness because these are both thing these are both memories that close him off, and this gives him some really great openness um, and puts a limitation on uh you know, how epic and smart and brilliant he's going to be so that he doesn't turn into like a Mary Sue type character. So it also adds some, uh, if he's not interested in the STEM sciences, it adds a little bit of uh, difficulty here because he might not be good at fixing the robot when the robot needs repairing. Um, so anyways, that is how you draw for a child character. Um, that's how you round him out. And uh, I hope, I know this is a very long drawing, but I hope it was interesting and I hope it was helpful. So take do, do a drawing list on your own, take some pictures, post them on Instagram, and let us know what interpretations you come up with. I love seeing um, the drawings and the, the fascinating stories that come up for people. So thanks for watching.